Um, so let's uh, begin. So the, the theme for today is aligning and settling the mind. And uh, we're on the, you know, looking at the Noble Eightfold Path, and we're on the, the fold of Samma Samadhi. So um, wise Samadhi or, or uh, good collectedness. So a really good uh, support for Samadhi is good sila, good ethics to live a life where the, we're not uh, burdened with regret. So let's uh, begin by taking the, the three refuges and the five precepts together. If, Noam, if you could get that up. Thank you. So I'm going to chant the homage to the Buddha and then the three refuges three times and then we'll go through the precepts and you just chant along with me rather than doing a call and response we'll just do it together and uh, keep your keep muted and you just do it at home together with me. So, and, you know, as we do this to really, you know, you can just go through the motions and say that, make the sounds, it becomes to connect your heart with what we're doing. So just thinking of the Buddha who, who laid open this path for anyone who has little dust in their eyes to uh, walk this path. And the Dhamma, the, the truth, the teaching of the truth of the way things are. And the Sangha, the community, the community of practitioners, the community of those who who work together to realize, or individually and together, to realize the teachings, to live the teachings, and to free ourselves from the from the burden and the, the dust and the and the grime and the struggle of samsara. So he showed us the way out. Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Bhutang saranang gachami Dhammang saranang gachami Sankang saranang gachami Dutiyampi bhutang saranang gachami Dutiyampi dhammang saranang gachami Dutiyampi sankang saranang gachami Tatiyampi Bhutang Saranang Gachami Tatiyampi Dhammang Saranang Gachami Tatiyampi Sankang Saranang Gachami So if you could uh, put the presets up Noam thank you do you have the precepts too yeah they're nice on a different page uh, the precepts <laughs> we'll get to the we'll get to the eightfold path in a sec this is part of the eightfold path actually good ethics
Great. Lovely. <laughs> they were hiding. <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna do the, the Pali because I like to. So I'm gonna chant the Pali and then and then you join me in saying the English. Panati Pata Vera Mani Sikapadang Samadhyami. I undertake the precept to refrain from taking the life of any living creature. Adina Dana Vera Mani Sikapadang Samadhyami. I undertake the precept to refrain from taking that which is not given. Kame sumi chachara veramani sikapadang samadhyami. I undertake the precept to refrain from sexual misconduct. Musavada veramani sikapadang samadhyami. I undertake the precept to refrain from false and harmful speech. Sura merayana pamadatana veramani sikapadang samadhyami. I undertake the precept to refrain from consuming intoxicating drink and drugs which lead to carelessness. So may these precepts be a support for true happiness, be a support for true peace, and uh, be a basis for the realization of the pure, deep peace of Nibbana. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Thank you. All right, so let's have some time of meditation together. <clears throat> Move over a little so you can see the Buddha. So find a posture that's comfortable enough where you're supported. And uh, where you have a, your spine is, a, is straight, but not too, you know, where you, you have a sense of uprightness, but without too much force. So it's a, it's a balance between putting in effort and relaxing. Somewhere in between those two, or with the combination of those two, is a sweet spot where the body and mind can settle and relax. And it may be if we're if our energy is very high and we're very anxious as we begin the meditation, then it's helpful to really emphasize on relaxing and letting go. So if there's a lot of turmoil inside, really pay special attention to the out breath. And as you breathe out, really letting go of any any tension, any angst that may be in you and agitating in there. It's like too much energy that's got stuck in the system. So you just need to invite that energy to let go back into the, to back to recycle in the universe. And if you're feeling sleepy or low energy or dull, then uh, to really pay attention to the in-breath, the life-giving breath, and uh, take in the, you know, to have a sense of energizing, taking in the energy with each in-breath. And likewise with the body, if you're feeling tense and, and agitated, just try to let that breath relax the body. And if you're feeling sleepy and dull, then let the in-breath, you know, pay particular attention to the posture, put a little extra effort into your posture and let the in-breath bring energy to your body. And also if you're feeling sleepy and dull, you can open your eyes a little and just have your eyes looking down rather than having them closed, which can be a little bit too close to sleep mode if you're sleepy. So, you know, we begin in this way, checking in how we are, what is needed right now, 
what are we where are we starting from so not beginning from an idea of what we think we should be doing but more how is it right now what's present right now And then knowing what is the, the right balance, what will help to, to bring that, what we meet now into balance. And if we, what we find is already balanced, then just being aware of the in-breath and the out-breath evenly. And enjoying, appreciating that feeling of, of balance. It might be helpful to take a, a few deep breaths in the beginning. And like I say, you know, you emphasize whichever breath is most needed to energize or to relax. And being aware of the mood of the mind. Is there a sense of peace, letting go, happiness? And if so, just rest into that more deeply. Is there a sense of tension or um, criticism? fear even and if so then bring this quality of kindfulness as Ajahn Brahm puts it kindfulness mindfulness with kindness to your mind state so not not falling into it and not trying to push it away or squash it but recognizing oh there's maybe a bit of anxiety present and bringing a sense of kindfulness to that. Or if there's a ill will, you know, like an, and uh, like a feeling annoyed or averse, then see if you can soften into the supports that are here right now. Uh, as a monastic we get to reflect on the four requisites that we have enough to eat we have clothing we have shelter we have medicines good enough doesn't have to be top quality and that can be a support for letting go of, of aversion ill will it's, uh, it brings a sense of contentment. It's like things are good enough. It's, this is okay. I have the support I need to be fully present now. And if there's a strong sense of wanting, wanting things to be other than how they are, or wanting something that you don't have now, Again, coming back to that sense of enough, 
is enough and letting go. So as a, you know, the first steps to settling into Samma Samadhi are putting aside, putting away desire and grief for the world. This is the preliminaries. Letting go of how we think it should be, how we want it to be. Letting go of grief or anger or anxiety about how things are. The world has always been tumultuous, always been chaotic. So you recognizing the nature of samsara, the, the nature of this endless round of rebirths that we are in at this moment. Recognizing the nature of that and not taking issue with it for this time. Putting away covetousness and grief for the world, the desire and grief for the world. So having put aside desire and grief for the world, mindfully we breathe in and mindfully we breathe out. Bringing presence to the in-breath, bringing presence to the out-breath. And then we just use the breath as our object for meditation this time. And staying, staying with this direct experience of the body breathing, breathing in and breathing out. And the mind wants to pull away here and get involved with something else. And then we keep it present with this. So it's vitaka and vichara, the qualities of putting the mind onto a wholesome object and sustaining that attention. So vitaka is like the contact and vichara is the sustaining. It takes some energy, some effort. And again, it's good to explore this this efforting. You know, if you if you put in too much effort, everything gets tense. And then if you've got some goal of what we're trying to get to, it all gets very tight. And then instead of experiencing presence and uh, letting go into samadhi, settling into samadhi, we we just experience a sense of tension and. Uh, almost like taking issue with the present moment. So that's not what we want to do. And if we don't put enough energy in, then the mind wanders here and wanders there. So it's making that in clear intention for this time. Kind of bring attention to the breath. Experience the direct sensation of the breath. And put, bring the breath central to our experience.
So our attention is directly with the sensation of breathing in and breathing out. Not in the mind that's trying to control or direct, but just with the breath itself. And we allow ourselves to settle, to enjoy the experience. Staying with each movement of the breath. And seeing if you can notice a little sense of well-being or joy that arises through just being with this simple experience of the body breathing in and breathing out or of the movement of the breath as it enters and leaves the body.
the theme of uh, Sama Samadhi in, in a way is, is always is always central to the teaching and uh, and it feels to me very very relevant at this time so we're you know approaching the elections in the US and tensions rise for people stress and fear and anger and righteousness and all kinds of stuff starts to come up and then of course we have the pandemic and uh, you know climate change climate chaos and we have layer upon layer of of, uh, of intensity on a worldly level at this time and uh, this can in our you know our rational minds it can be a, a good reason to not do our practice you know not to not to not settle we can't settle because there's always turmoil going on there's always things to worry about there's always things to also to get involved in and i think it's good to definitely have your involvement our involvement uh, including voting <laughs> very very important um but I feel like it's also very important to take care of our practice at this time. So actually, but um, when things get, you know, when, when things get amped up, then that's all the more reason that we need to settle and find a place of still. So I think it's a key thing in you know the beginning of the Anapanasati Sutta that the Buddha says, having put away you know desire and grief or covetousness and grief for the world, you know that wanting the world to be the way we want and not wanting it to be the way it is, essentially, you know having put away those those desires and and diversions of of how the world is, mindfully we breathe then mindfully we be now and it begins with with that clarity of you know it's not like everything's you know we, we we don't wait until everything's good enough you know everything's like settled before we start to do the practice but we find that sense of settledness in the midst of the turmoil of the world and it may be the, the, the bigger overarching things, are the big overarching things of, of aging, sickness, death, you know, those are part of life. And there may be any, any one or combination of those may be up for us at this time too. And, uh, and then there'll be, you know, personal things, family related or, you know, there's, there's many or between friendships or work, there's many, many, in life brings up many challenges and that's the way life is so if we wait for the perfect conditions in order to allow the mind to settle then we just stay caught in the the turmoil of the world so this is an invitation to to recognize yes the world is tumultuous and for this time we're just going to put that aside on a shelf here what i want how i want it to be is going to go here how I wish it wasn't is going to go here. And then I'm going to just focus and settle body and mind. And, you know, you can be pretty sure it's going to, it's going to come back later. You don't need to worry about putting it aside for this. It's not going to probably not going to go away too, too quickly, but you can put it on the shelf. Those, those uh, concerns and, and, and wants, you can put them on the shelf and then you, bring your attention back in, bring it inward. And being with that very simple experience of the breath, it's surprisingly sweet. I mean, it did take me some time when I first started to practice, my mind was so chaotic and busy and confused that it did take quite some time to be able to, you know, appreciate the breath. And that's why in the beginning I said that it spoke about the importance of the precepts. It's very important to have the precepts so that we can start to have more um, a more settled mind. You know, if we're if we're constantly creating more harm and and more chaos in our own lives, then 
it's very difficult to settle. So we, you know, we create a basis, a foundation of, of ethics, of sila, and of, um, you know, basic kind of kindness to others and to ourselves. That's sometimes the hardest one, but very, very important. And, uh, and that gives us a, a place from which we can begin to settle. And the, you know, the, the, the kind of directions in a way of, of for Sama Samadhi are to cultivate uh, Vitaka and Vichara that I mentioned. So the, that, that quality of, of putting one's attention on a, a, a neutral object. You put your attention on that neutral object, such as the breath. It can be also be metta, actually, which is less neutral, but it, it can also use metta, loving kindness, that uh, feeling of benevolence as a, an access to samadhi. So it's, it's what brings a sense of settling and well-being and letting go. These are, these are the qualities that support samadhi to arise, some of the qualities. And we, and, it, and we do need to be in an environment that's, that's um, good enough, you know, like probably, you know, like, if, it, like while you're driving a car is not a good time to be cultivating samadhi. Um, you know, you need to, that's more like a mindfulness practice. You want to be constantly mindful and aware, responsive. Um, you can get good samadhi through, through um, sports. Some of you might have experienced that through running cycling that the mind can go into samadhi where I, I used to get it doing very long long hikes with a very heavy backpack over, over uh, quite um you know, do this with other nuns going over over mountain like hillsides hills and mountains that were very samey there was nothing very exciting going on there would be maybe little little changes in the flora and fauna a tiny bit and then but it was like it, it took quite a bit of effort and concentration and it wasn't very visually stimulating or intellectually stimulating and then the mind would pin to this state of samadhi and um i noticed when i st when, it's, when it'd stop you know after sometimes like 25 miles of walking with this really heavy pack sometimes in the rain you know and then you stop it and you and you sit and and the mind just deeply settles it's it's, it's just like primed to go into a deep stillness so it can be through through something physical like that physical exertion that's very simple and repetitive and uh, and continued that can bring a sense of samadhi that can bring the quality of samadhi and also if, if we're sitting you know in a peaceful enough quiet enough place it's not it doesn't have to be perfect so while I was sitting, you're probably not picking it up, hopefully, but while I was sitting there, there was like stuff going on outside, cars and shouting and then washing up going on in here, loud conversation. And, and, and it's like, OK, it's not ideal, but because I know that this is what I want to do now, I want to want to focus the mind. and also sitting in front of a laptop. You know, it's not my it's not how I would normally meditate, but in this context, it's OK. Um, you know, then, then knowing that there are all these conditions that like these are challenges, it's like, okay, that's these are the challenges that are present now. Put them to one side and then just really bring the attention into into stillness into, and internally into the experience of the of the breath. And then as I do that, I start to experience the breath. It's it's gentle, it's soft, it's it's uh, and I, I, the more I stay with it, the more it's, it's like there's a pleasure to it. It's, it's pleasant, you know. And uh, and then that brings a sense of well-being. If I remember to notice, because you also have to remember to notice those things. So if, and if we're just trying to stay with the breath, stay with the breath, stay with the breath, stay with the breath, it's not really interesting enough. So the mind gets bored, and then it wants to go off in something else. So we need to appreciate the the, the pleasure and and the joy. That arises through being with the breath, and it's and it can be very subtle. So this is also something we can we can hear, you know how how things are supposed to be. You know, like when I was in the monastery, there'd be in in the UK. You know, the the more in my early years, we would talk about you know well, what is 
you know, what is what is piti, you know, the, which can be translated as rapture or joy, you know, what is that really, you know, and, uh, and are you experiencing or not experiencing it again? What, what is ekagata, what is one-pointedness, you know, and, and who's getting it and who's not, you know, and, and then and sometimes we've created such a high level that you'd feel like you're never going to get anywhere near it, and then you're just meditating, you know, with a sort of perception of a failure right from the beginning, and then you're never getting anywhere. So you don't want to set yourself up like that. And, uh, you know, and the, the Dhamma doesn't really do that. It is more about turning towards what is present, being with what is present, responding to what is present. It's, it's really about that. And then also putting in the right causes and conditions for, for wholesome states to arise. So, uh, you know, if we have very strong sensual desire, then it's it's not going to be easy to, in, in, in the moment, it's not going to be easy to, go into deeper states of concentration. So you need to deal with that, you know, and, and one of the ways to deal with it is to is to notice the unbeautiful. So sensual desires is, is, comes really strong when we're looking at the attractive and the beautiful, what we want, and we're gonna get some gratification and then and then reflecting on the the unbeautiful aspect of, of whatever it is that we're we're wanting. And if you've had uh, any little tastes of samadhi, you know, then you, you know that the samadhi is somehow more beautiful than any any worldly experience we can have. And we can forget that. And so then, it, then the mind's pulled back into the sort of more, the, the grosser sense desires. But the, the pleasure of samadhi is very, very beautiful, very sweet, very, very uh, subtle and, uh, and free. It's not connected with, um, you know, like the sense, sense of desire, getting gratification through sense of desire. You get the gratif you get the gratification, but then you get more and more desire. It's this endless cycle. It's something I saw when I was about 13. It's like, oh, what is going on here? You know, it's like the world's difficult. And then it offers you these nice pleasures. And then, and then you follow them and then you want them. Like you just keep wanting them more and more. It gives you more and more suffering. Whereas the, the pleasure of samadhi isn't like that. It's, it's, a, it's a present and a deep, free, beautiful pleasure. Free in that it doesn't keep you, it might keep you hooked, you know, it can be, keep you hooked to some degree, but it's not something you have to worry about too much. You can get hooked on, on samadhi, but it, I think there's enough wise people around uh, that, that you would... Uh, and also enough challenges that you probably wouldn't get stuck for too long. So don't worry about that too much. And uh, and also the, you know, if we have a lot of ill will and aversion, then then we can't go into those those subtle that, that you can't the, the mind won't settle in that way. Um, and another another way of dealing with the aversion is speaking. Of, uh, what I said, uh, gave one example earlier, but another example is to work with the four elements. That's a way of working with anger and ill will. So, you know, when there's anger and ill will, it's we, we're caught up in the story. There's the self and the others and and how how it should be and what they're doing and why it shouldn't be that way. And there's all of that. And then when we reflect on the elements, it's like, okay, there's the there's earth element here, there's earth element in the ground that I'm sitting on, and there's earth element in the president for example you know and then we're not getting that we're not getting stirred up about the shouldn't be like this and ah, this and you know we're not getting we're not getting agitated and upset we're just recognizing earth element earth and um you know water element that there's that there's water in this body here that goes in comes out goes through cycles just as it is, does with everyone else every other being so the the elements can really calm cool and calm the mind and also can ex, can give it more expansive experience rather than this little me and mine story it can bring us into the you know it's like the four great elements that make up this earth make up probably all you know the universe i would, I would assume i don't know for sure but i think so um, in varying degrees, the four great elements. So it takes it out of the, the small, 
painful or, or um, kind of acute story into something more broad and general and then and then we can start to to let go and settle in that so um yeah those so those so it, we have to kind of deal with the the grosser hindrances to start with and then there may still be some restlessness you know so that's why in the beginning of the meditation i was pointing to you know to just check in is is the is the mind I, you know, are you are you feeling stressed, anxious? You know, then there's then there's the hindrance of restlessness present. So then we need to calm that, settle that. Or is there the hindrance of, of um, sleepiness and dullness? You know, there's not enough energy, feeling feeling sluggish. Then you need to bring more, consciously bring more energy in and put more effort into the the practice and put more effort into really sustaining those first two qualities of vitaka and vichara, of, of putting your attention on the, for example, the breath and, and keeping it there, staying present, staying present, staying present. So that's, uh, so that, so those, those hindrances are a little bit easier to deal with. I mean, like we have to really put aside the, the first two, but we can work with the, the next two, you know, the, the rest is this and, Sleepless and dullness in the meditation that can that can lead us more deeply into settling and uh, and doubt. So one way of uh, combating doubt is just to put more, just to to kind of give oneself to the practice. So it's uh, it's like if you've ever I don't you don't have so much, it doesn't happen so much here that you have a car with a tr with a a little trailer on the back. I don't mean a, a, a caravan kind of trailer, but like uh, in the in the Europe and in the UK, you, you get often you get a because here you get here trucks. It's a little different, but often in the UK you'll have a maybe a car, and on the back it'll have a little open trailer that that you can put stuff in and and or or a regular trailer, and 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 it can be the cars driving along, and then the trailer starts to sway, and if the car tries to counterbalance then it gets more and more and more and more and more off the road off the rails until it can uh, jackknife whereas if the car pulls it if it accelerates and pulls out pulls it out then then that this this swaying stops and, and get and straightens up again and it can be the same with our meditation practice that if there's a doubt why am i doing it right maybe i shouldn't really be doing anapanasati or should I be looking at the long breath or the short breath? You know, they can be. Then we start to go into the doubt and into the thinking, and then and then it all starts to go off the rails. And then it's like, oh, I should just forget it and just go and have a cup of tea. You know, so so not to do that, but to okay, I'm not sure, not sure. Just okay, just settle into this breath. Just what is this breath like actually? Just settle into this breath now. And then, oh, is there? What happens at the end of the breath? Is there a does it go straight to the other breath or is there a little moment, little pause? Oh yeah, there's a little pause there. And then there's oh, and there's the in-breath. So it's it's not uh, so it's this is you know, doubt is always about thinking, thinking about things. Is it right? Is it wrong? Should it be this way? Should it be that way? And and the you know, settling is it's like you, you pull the mind out of that, back into presence back into presence so uh you know when and we, when we practice in this way to to notice any little you know as, as the mind does start to settle as we as we're drawing it away from the the turmoil of the world and the you know the the not enough energy or the too much energy or the you know the doubt whatever that's that's going on here and it and everything starts to get more balanced and settled then there is um the, and even on the way in there there is this pleasure this very simple and kind of innocent pleasure of of breathing <laughs> you know and or of being present with breathing and it's it's very sweet so allowing the mind to, to settle into that and to uh, to experience that and then and then sukha, kind of a, a kind of happiness. I like to think of that as you know the, the 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 joy is a little bit like it rises up. It's like oh, this is lovely. 
you know, we, we maybe I tend to feel it more more around here, you know, maybe coming up the the piti, and then the sukha, the the, the happiness or well being is when it's no longer moving up, but I'm inviting it just to fill the whole body, just to come down into the legs, down into the toes, down into the, down into the arms, into the fingers, into the into the head, the ears, you know, all of it. The whole body is is allowed to be filled with that quality of well-being and it might not be like super happy you know it can just be just like a subtle well-being and so that's like the the, the, the experience the happiness the sukha the yeah, well-being and then uh, ekagata one-pointedness where the mind that's where the mind is 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 going into that samadhi is resting in samadhi where it's not we don't have to work at it anymore. We're not having to keep on reminding the mind, but come on, come back. Oh yeah, come on, give attention to this. It's just it just starts to collect. It's collecting and it's settled and it's and it might be a, it might be like collected like this or it's in a in a, a more sort of smallish way or it might be it might be quite expensive. And as we stay with the you know the the, the well, the samadhi, the, the, if we, we, as we keep present with that quality of, of settledness and and of breath, then it can really open up into quite a quite an expansive state. But in, even in, in its expansiveness, it doesn't lose the quality of one pointedness. So the one pointedness isn't necessarily like a narrow little point. It can be it can be a, a, a a broadish point and it can be a vast point and that the mind is is settled in this kind of expansive state very beautiful and it's different to you know opening the mind and letting it wander around the mind isn't wandering at all in samadhi it is it is just here and it might be here as i say in, in a in a very tight focused way or it can be in a, in a very broad way but it's a ten be different to when it's just just mindfulness and uh huh oh yeah this uh -huh, uh -huh. it's different. So uh, so these five qualities are uh, the uh, samadhi. They're the factors that lead to samadhi. And uh, you know there are teachers who like to give very very clear you know first you do this then you do that and then you should experience this and you experience that and then this insight arises and then that one and you know there are those systems they've never worked for me at all so i'm not going to teach in that way <laughs> because i find that for me when i have that uh, that kind of that kind of ticket off the list system there's always a sense of self trying to get somewhere and and that's already you know forget about samadhi so um so that's just what it does for me. For some people, it works, you know, okay, do this, do this, do this, this. Oh, this is happening. Okay, do this. And for some people, it works. For me, it doesn't. So for me, it has to be much more innocent, just trusting, you know, rest into the breath. It's no, like start, you know, beginning with no, no, where is the mind? What's the mind doing? What, what do I need to do to keep, to, to find balance? And then, bringing that attention to the breath and resting in the breath and appreciating the the pleasant qualities and and then really being generous with the with the body you know that it's not just a mind experience not just the mind experiences samadhi but the body and mind experience the samadhi so bringing the body into the picture and sharing the the pleasure with the body the the uh, sukha and then uh, you know, if you notice that there is that ekagata, that that one point, that uh, unification of mind, then to to dwell there, to dwell there. So I think that this personally, I think this is very very important practice at this time, because it's in that state of um, settled presence that we see reality more clearly. So when we don't allow the mind to settle, then we're always involved in the stories, in the narratives, in the me and you, in the in the us and them, into the this and that. 
into the shoots and the shouldn'ts, and we're always involved in those. And it's just the nature of thought, really. The, the thought is dualistic. It, it'll always be about this and that. That's just how it is. And uh, when we drop into those states of samadhi or presence, and then we start to see it. Sort of, it let it there. It, it, if we move out of that, that. Uh, duality into more of a direct experience of reality and of the of the flux you know of the change of the constant change and also we start to see more clearly how our intention affects you know has it has a huge effect surprisingly is we start to see like oh it, it all begins with intention so what the mind is intending you know it, it creates things it, it, it affects the world not you know obviously not you know what we the intention does lead to action it leads to speech and action and the more we can see that then the more we can direct you know we can we can cultivate the right conditions for beneficial action beneficial speech to arise and that is how we little by little change the world. It's the only way, actually. One, I mean, not the only way. I shouldn't say that. There are many ways, but it always begins with intention. So we see those things when the mind settles more deeply. Then it's, it, those things become clear, and uh, the doubts and the fears don't really have a place in the settled mind. They they're not relevant. Sometimes desire can arise for more subtle states. That's that can be there, and uh, you know we want to get something more than what we've got. And surely this goes deeper. You know we can have those thoughts arising, and um, so then we can just know that there's a certain uh, dissatisfaction and, and a certain wanting that's present. And then we might be able to. Um, well, we, can, we may just let go of that and, and be with things as they are and let it take its own natural process or we may want to um, apply a different effort to see whether we can let go a little bit more and I think that letting go is a very important uh, reminder because it's not about getting things so some of samadhi we do ex you know in some of samadhi we do experience beautiful wholesome states pleasure that's can be much more pleasurable than anything you can experience in the world you know it can be that way not not always for me anyway not always but it can be that way um but it's not about getting anything it's not about yeah i got this really good ex state in the meditation you know it, it's there for a while and it passes like everything else but it's more that when the mind is settled deeply in that way it reveal the the truth of the way things are is revealed more clearly, and and it invites a greater letting go. So uh, you know the path is all about letting go, actually, cultivating and letting go, both of those things. So we have the sila, the ethics that's about you know how we relate to ourselves and others, and then uh, the brahma viharas like kind of kindness and. Uh, compassion of, and appreciation and equanimity letting go that's a kind of a letting go and uh, and then the wisdom qualities that 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 recognize directly the constant arising and passing away of things and how we how what we do with our mind and our speech and our body directly affects that So don't underestimate the importance of uh, Sama Samadhi, even in these challenging times, or even especially in these challenging times. And they, they you know, this is uh, an important aspect of the Eightfold Path that is a path that leads to seeing clearly. And seeing clearly leads to letting go of delusion, and letting go of delusion leads to peace, to liberation. So it's all here. This is the sweet thing. It's all here. 
it just takes our remembering and uh, putting the right conditions in place to, to nurture that. So I hope that uh, you will have some time in a day, in an, on an evening or in a morning or in an afternoon that you can put aside for that and, and not to, not let the world push you around and, and make you forget how, how precious that is and that everything you need is right there. You, you, you have it right there in your body and mind. Thank you, okay. So question. Uh, you were talking about anger and the earth element and I lost you a bit earlier. Could you speak a little more about anger? I'm unable to speak by the computer because I do not have a microphone set up. That's good because I can't hear you anyway. <laughs> Nor do I have a camera for my computer, okay. So um, I'll just say a little bit. So so anger, you know, anger is, um, is Anger and ill will is one of the one of the hindrances. So the five hindrances are what will hinder us from settling into a deeper state and seeing clearly. So sensual desire is one of those hindrances, and, and ill will, it's generally called ill will, is another of those hindrances. And anger is one of the aspects of ill will. It has many aspects, is anger, resentment, um, fear irritation you know that all these kind of things come under the kind of big umbrella of of ill will and uh, so uh, what I was saying was if you if w one of the antidotes to ill will you know so say if there's this I feel angry because somebody is doing something that upsets me that I feel very strongly affected by and then I can, you know, if I go into that, it creates a more and more strong sense of me and them and I'm right and they're wrong and it shouldn't be this way. And, and then, the, and then the, here in my own heart and mind, the, the experience of the anger starts to boil away, you know. And, uh, and then I might start thinking about what am I going to do to that person? How can I make it, you know, how can I stop them? And, and um, it's... Uh, it's a, it's like the mind cannot settle when that turbulence is going on. So it's not possible to have anger and samadhi at the same time, for example. It's, it's like when the, the anger needs to subside in order to drop into that deeper state of, of presence and of settledness. And I'm not saying you can't be present with anger, you, you can, but and, and it's good to be if you have it because then it, you get some choice of what you do with it. Um, and I was saying one of the antidotes or one of the ways of, of dispelling it is to work with the elements. If it's a kind of a big topic to, to, and we're right at the end of the session, so um, I can't get into it in great depth, but uh, it's uh, just seeing like this body here, this, what I call Ananda Bodhi, is made up of the four elements, earth, water, fire, and air. And so those, those basic, those basic, they're called the elements in the Buddhist teaching. It's made up of those things and there's this different balance and the body's made up of those things earth water fire and air and then this the the room i'm sitting in is also made up of earth water fire and air the earth itself is made up of earth water fire and air the person i'm upset about is made up of earth water fire and air and then when you start to really deeply reflect in that way it's like you can't take issue with it it's all just the elements at play moving around in different in different uh, uh, different uh, combinations so once you start to think in that way it's, it's it, it th 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 there's nothing for anger to get to hook on to so that's what i was pointing to and um, which may or may not work for you and, and you know and there is also the 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 um view that anger is important you know it does have a function in the in the in the survival system and it's an important um quality from which to act you know if you're angry about something like if if you see somebody doing something that's harming any individual or many individuals that you feel angry and then you want to you want to put it right so it can be a, an appropriate response to 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 another person doing harm 
but uh, generally acting from anger is, is is not the the way so there's a lot of um, teaching now in the social justice movement around because people who are caught it, who are very involved in social justice often are, are, are coming from a place of anger it shouldn't be this way right righteous anger and it's right it shouldn't be this way and and, and that's true but coming from anger is is like poisoning one's own system so you're not you're not coming from a place of, of, of um it's like you're, you're 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 putting poison into your own system as you try to heal another system and that doesn't really it's not effective it, it leads to burnout so there is a whole um psychological therapeutic um, movement in to support people in the social justice movement for example that well that's that's guiding people to come from clarity from compassion from um from ethics you know and then when you come from that place you can still do the same work but you're but it's energizing it's, it's enlivening and it's and it's up it's uplifting one's own life and the lives of others rather than your system getting burnt out through through toxic anger yeah so so in, in relation to samadhi anger is a is a is in the way you can't have both and like i said you know when the mind really settles in samadhi then you start to see so much more clearly it's it's profound So thank you. One question I have. Is this okay that we go? Is, is this all right? No, that we go into questions. Thank you. Oops, I lost it. Hang on. So from Susie, thank you. One question I have is regarding the different practices leading to samadhi. My experience of settledness or wellness is quite different when I practice metta versus anapanasati. In anapanasati, I experience a settled peace, almost trance-like. Mm -hmm. Also, my mind is quite active when practicing metta, but still in anapanasati. But still in anapanasati. Uh -huh. Would you mind speaking a bit to the different experiences in different samadhi practices? Mm -hmm. I mean, I think if the mind is still quite busy, then it may not be samadhi. It sounds like there's still quite a lot of of. Um, you may not. It may be like the first, like the vitaka and vichara is there. That the first some of the samadhi factors are there. You, you, you're, you're putting your mind onto the metta and you're keeping it there and maybe experiencing some well-being and joy also. Um, but it sounds like if, if the mind is, is quite active, then, it's, then the samadhi maybe hasn't arrived yet. Um, so one way... I mean, I don't know what you know. There, there are different. There's also very many, many different meta practices. And uh, if you're, you know, I haven't actually used um, meta phrases myself in order to come to samadhi. I've used the phrases for healing, you know, for healing the troubled heart. I've used them in that way, but not as a as an entry into samadhi. But what I have used is more the the quality the quality of metta with the breath so that that leads quite naturally into a, into a collected state and and also quite an expansive expansive state and that's where you use you know you might use the phrases or you might use an image or a, um yeah an intention that that gets the quality of metta going but the thing with the with the phrases is you're my experience is you're up, I'm up here thinking, keeping those phrases going, and then the quality of metta is kind of here. Some people feel it in their in their gut, and, and I feel it more in the heart. So, so the way I practice, like to practice, is to is to get that quality going as an energy in the heart, and then once that quality is going, I don't have to keep thinking the phrases or or thinking of the person or the or the place or the animal or whatever that's that's brought up the quality. I can let that go. And then um, come to the to the actual experience of metta. And um, one way of saying it is to is to shift from doing the metta practice, where you're that's like the vitaka and vichari, and doing it, you're putting the energy in the phrases or the 
or the you know the image or whatever you move once once you get the quality of metta going then you move from the doing into the being so you let your attention drop down into the metta quality in the heart mind and i like to use the breath as a, a means to stay present with that so breathing in uh, so, and I, I for me it's like a, a kind of like a like the la the light of a lamp that's radiating in all directions and uh, and it has a sort of a warmth and a lovingness to it but it's like a light that's just radiating in all directions it's not it's not limited by anything and um and then the breath will be like with the in breath i'm bringing a little bit more fuel to the to that lamp you know it's getting a little bit brighter and with the out breath I'm just inviting it to, if it wants to, it can spread further. Sometimes it doesn't want to, it just wants to stay small. So it's like each breath is, is staying connected with the quality of metta. It's very nice. So you're doing both sort of a combination of anapanasati and metta together. And um, and then at some point you can also let go, if, if the mind really gets very settled in that, you can also let go of the breath and just be be the metta. You don't even have to stay with the breath anymore. So you might want to experiment with that a little bit. Okay, I think we probably should, should we wind up? Yeah. Okay, so let's uh, end with uh, chanting the Eightfold Path. That name got off a little bit earlier. Thanks. Great. Thank you. So I'm going to just chant this as a mantra. I'm just going to do it three times because we're a little over time. And please join with me. It's, it's right there. And this, this. The Noble Eightfold Path is a liberating path, and it's something that we can all cultivate and develop, and it, it carries us to where we really want to go, which is nowhere and everywhere. Samadhiti Samma Sankha Sama Samma Vacha Samma Kamanta Samma Hajiwa Samma Vayama Samma Sati Samma Samadhi Samma Diddi Samma Sankapa Pa Samma Vacha Samma Kamanta Samma Hajiwa Samma Vayama Samma Sati Samma Samadhi Samma Diddi Samma Sankapa Samma Vacha Samma Kamanta Samma Ajiva Samma Vayama Samma Sati Samma Samadhi So may you take good care of your heart and mind over these days, weeks, years, moments. And, and please don't forget that uh, everything you need is right there. You have it all. We just need to remember to use the tools we have. Thank you. Thank